why people don't use fountain pens anymore. Dear Anna, I loved watching you decorate your house for Christmas. It was so beautiful. Your house looked so peaceful and idyllic. And I thought to myself, does she have ha time just alone in her own house? I would give my left foot for some solitude right now. What? <laughs> Since my sister is a frontline healthcare worker, we have not been able to interact with each other without social distancing for something like almost 10 months now. Oh my God, has it been that long? And we kind of thought what better garment to help us maintain a six feet distance than a hoop skirt. Since my sister and I are 1860s civilian reenactors, we felt really seen by these memes that started coming out back in March where they took the satirical cartoons of women wearing giant hoop skirts and were like, oh, this is easy. We just do social distancing this way. So of course, lots of misconceptions started popping up about 1860s Cage Crinolins. People were not super well researched on uh, what the purpose of them was. Although there is no shortage of satirical cartoons poking fun about how men could not approach a woman in a hoop skirt because it was just too big and outrageous, I'm here to testify that having waltzed with many a respectable gentleman in a 120 inch cage crinolin, I can say that, uh, yeah, that's not a thing. Men can approach you quite closely. For our walks, we both wear 120 inch cage crinolin from Needle and Thread at Gettysburg. Our reenactment group did a big bulk order of these kits, these build kits, um, and had a workshop so that we could all put them together. But my sister and I were not able to go to the workshop, so we thought, oh, we'll just do it on our own in our own spare time. <laughs> After the workshop was over, we started hearing horror stories. So I opted to send my kit back to Needle and Thread and have them assemble it for me. It was the best decision I have ever made. My sister carried on and made hers herself because she is stronger willed and tighter fisted than I am. Anyway, our cage crinolines have over 20 hoops and are constructed of steel encased in cotton and then attached onto twill tapes hanging down from the waistband with these little teeny, teeny, tiny brads that feel like they could not have possibly been constructed for the hoops that they're supposed to go around because they just feel like they're too small. At least that's what I hear because I didn't make my own. My crinoline makes me feel very fancy because historically the more hoops you had on your cage, the more expensive it was. So mine would have been like top tier fancy pants hoop. Not to say that cage crinolines were only accessible to the wealthy. My friend and fashion historian Betsy told me that there were cage crinolines found, like manufactured ones. They were available in territories like California and Montana, places that were seemingly very remote, but people could get them. At first, I was really self-conscious about walking around the neighborhood in my costume. Our clothes send messages about who we are and we cannot control how those messages are received. And people seem to approach me and think that I am having my Scarlett O'Hara moment. And that could not be farther than the truth. I am no, I am not here as an 1860s civilian reenactor to have some sort of like white supremacist fantasy. It is not the point. If I'm having anybody's moment, it's probably Angelina Grimke. However, as we repeated our walks, I became less and less self-conscious. And besides, if my neighbors are as bored as I am, they're probably looking for something weird to talk about anyway. As for social distancing, hoops are not terribly effective at keeping people six feet apart. Um, we have a 120 inch diameter, which math, math, math means we have a couple feet between us if we walk skirt to skirt. That's not enough. So um, we still have to keep a good distance between each other when we're walking in our hoops. However, it is a really good reminder to keep our distance, which is really challenging when you're with somebody that you have a really close relationship with. 
My favorite part is walking past people who in true Minnesota fashion are trying to pretend like it's not happening. They are like, oh, hello. I like to make aggressive eye contact with them and say, good day to you. Anyway, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. You've got to come on a social distancing walk with us sometime. It is super fun and a really good excuse to make all the warm, cozy woolies. Mm.